Good morning, everyone. My name is Rob Matthews, and I'm Esri's industry lead for urban planning and community development. And I'm really excited to be here today and really glad to see all of you here as well. For this technology uh, showcase, we've brought together um, several colleagues from across the company to show you some incredible technology. Uh, but before we dive in, I would just like to reflect briefly on uh, the interconnected nature of, uh, of, uh, of the way of the places that we live and work, um, our population, the buildings and spaces that we inhabit, the neighborhoods and districts that we live in, and ultimately the cities and the infrastructure that provide uh, that way of life for us. Um, and all of those are embedded within these natural and landscape systems that uh, ultimately support our well-being. We have many fa uh, challenges facing uh, our planet and our species, and some say that these are insurmountable. Uh, but I believe in the power of geodesign, and I believe in the power of design in general, and I'm sure that you also agree, or you wouldn't be here at the Geodesign Summit. So what are we designing? And I really mean that in two ways. So first, what are we at Esri designing in terms of tools, solutions, and technologies, some of which you'll see here in just a moment? But what are we, you, all of us, designing in terms of a better future? I hope these presentations will be food for thought and stimulate ideas on how to connect the dots uh, between all of these issues, all of these scales, and how we'll ultimately leverage this technology um, to do the hard but important work of designing, planning, building, and operating our built environment, while at the same time protecting our fragile natural systems. And we look forward to engaging with you throughout the week. And uh, without any delay, let's go ahead and dive in. So I will hand it off to Caitlin, who will start us off at the regional scale and landscape scale. Caitlin? Great. Thank you, Rob. All right. So I'd like to give you a, an overview of GeoPlanner for ArcGIS and try to frame it within the context of the importance of regional systems and their connection to cities. So there's, um, there's my clicker. A growing awareness in our world of the importance between, of connecting regional land use planning and city planning, especially per, for provisioning urban water supply. A great example of this is San Francisco. San Francisco has a new water code that requires a water supply assessment for any new project of a certain size. This includes proposed residential development of more than 5,000 dwelling units, proposed commercial office buildings employing more than 1,000 people, and other stipulations. A water supply assessment determines whether there is some sufficient water supply to serve the demand of the new project. Taking the long view, green infrastructure is key to upholding regional water quality and quantity as cities grow. GeoPlanner for ArcGIS helps you understand, plan, and evaluate green infrastructure in relation to regional land use planning and resource management goals. Green infrastructure consists of the waterways, intact cores, vegetated corridors, and larger fragments of habitat in a landscape. These are sometimes referred to as indispensable patterns in a landscape. If you've ever looked out the plane window in an airplane, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And landscape ecologist Richard Foreman, I think, summed up this concept really eloquently. He said that there are certain indispensable patterns in a landscape that, if protected, will conserve the majority of ecological functions in that landscape. And that's powerful. Using GeoPlanner for green, um, and green infrastructure data from Esri's Living Atlas, whoops, sorry, we can discover, excuse me, let's go back, these key patterns and help use them as a foundation for planning as cities grow. GeoPlanner for ArcGIS is a web-based tool for regional and natural system scenario planning and design. It gives you the ability to plan and design in scenarios to evaluate the impact of those scenarios with real-time dashboards, and to collaborate in teams to reach consensus on important issues. GeoPlanner was designed to support the geodesign workflow. It gives you the ability to understand an area and its processes through data and analysis, to design alternative scenarios in response to those analyses using easy-to-use sketching and painting tools, 
and it gives you the ability to compare and evaluate the impacts of your design decisions that eventually lead you to a preferred outcome. So in this way, GeoPlanner allows you to test ideas with speed and with confidence in an iterative and collaborative environment. GeoPlanner has many uses, but among them are green infrastructure planning, environmental screening, <laughs> renewable energy planning, and what we'll look at today is land use planning. So let's take a look at how GeoPlanner can be used um, to plan future residential land use in the, one of the Bay Area's 26 cities, while also being mindful of scarce water resources and the green infrastructure that supports them. I'm not sure if this is playing. It's a video. Oh, here we go. The cities, water districts, and private utilities in the Bay Area are supported by the Hetch Hetchy Water, system, water Reservoir System. 85% of the water comes from the Sierra Nevada snowmelt in the Hetch Hetchy, which is located squarely in Yosemite National Park. This water travels 160 miles via gravity from Yosemite to San Francisco Bay Area. Oops. One reason the Bay Area has some of the best water quality is because it's surrounded by green infrastructure. These are forested natural areas that make sure that the water quality is, there's a strong correlation between forest cover and surface water quality. At first glance, this looks pretty good. The surface water areas are well housed within these green infrastructure areas, but the aquifers, which are located in these areas, are not afforded the same protections. As we can see, some priority development areas that are outlined in the Plan Bay Area 2040 plan, located in here in yellow, are in these aquifer areas. So how can we dive into a study area of Livermore, California, which has six of these priority development areas, and make sure we're allocating enough housing to meet the demand for 20,000 new units, while also being conscious of protecting green infrastructure? So we want to make sure that we're protecting these green areas while also trying to allocate housing. I'm going to turn this off and go down and turn on our aerial imagery so we can get a better look at the ground. There's a large quarry area in the middle of this city, which presents an interesting opportunity for some green infrastructure restoration down the line to promote groundwater recharge. One of the first things we want to do is understand where the areas of green infrastructure value are. So we're going to look at one of GeoPlanner's more powerful tools, which is a weighted raster overlay model. This gives us the ability to look at multiple, not just one, but multiple criteria at once. One of the most powerful features of GeoPlanner is the ability to do multi-criteria analysis on the fly. So I chose these four criteria layers, and we can weight and score each layer according to their relative value. Here I go through and I've given a score according to relative importance for each land cover type. I know this area in particular has a lot of shrubland and grassland which are important to water filtration, so I've made sure to score them highly. When everything adds up to 100%, we'll save this model, turn it on in our map, and we can see the areas highlighted in green are areas we want to protect for green infrastructure and water quality. You can change the symbology, but we're going to go back to our symbology that highlights the areas in green. Areas in yellow and in orange are areas that are more suitable for development, so we can start to design in response to this analysis. Switching from existing land use, we're going to create two new scenarios. One will be for multi, uh, single family residential development and one will test a scenario for multifamily residential development that is denser. So looking at our single family residential unit, or uh, sorry, scenario first, we can start to design in response to our analysis layers. I open up my design tab and there's the drawing and painting tools. I'll start by drawing in 
some single family residential areas. You can see that I'm using the underlying suitability model to place this single family residential area squarely in an area that's more suitable for development, therefore protecting the surrounding green infrastructure in the area. Opening up the dashboard, we can see that we're at 16,000 total dwelling units and 716 single family residential units. And again, we're reaching towards a goal of 20,000 new residential units in this area. Using the painting tool, we can start to change different land use types. So for example, from industrial to the single family residential and watch how our key performance indicators for housing change in the dashboard. In this way, GeoPlanner gives you a rapid response to your design, so you can measure quantitatively and qualitatively. We can go through and change some of these industrial areas to single-family residential. And we've exceeded our 20,000 goal, but we're going to keep drawing a few more in by using the draw tool, again, in response to that underlying suitability analysis layer. This area, with this much single-family uh, residential housing, will consume 26,000 gallons of water per day. So keep that number in mind. Moving on to our second scenario, we'll look to a scenario that's going to densify housing patterns. So this will include more mixed-use residential development and more high-density housing. And hopefully, we can stay around the same amount of water consumption. So we'll look again to the down, historic downtown area. This area is already pretty densely developed with mixed use land use. We can use the paint tool to paint in some higher density development and see how that reflects in our real time dashboard. Continue painting and drawing our way towards our goal. Moving over to some of the areas with more um, commercial development and multifamily residential, we can start to look at areas where, again, our green infrastructure model tells us that it's OK to draw in some areas for residential development. Without this model underneath, we wouldn't know necessarily what areas are suitable for green infrastructure or to preserve to uphold water quality in the area or not. So this tool allows us to feedback in a number of different ways. Using the paint tool, we will go through and change a number of our um, multifamily residential areas to more mixed use, being conscious of changing them within the areas uh, specified by our model and with areas that are close to commercial, existing commercial areas. We'll change this larger area to mixed use residential and watch how it changes in our dashboard. But one more area over here, changing industrial areas to mixed use areas because we know that a transit corridor is coming through here by 2040. Getting closer to our goal of 20,000 units here, especially if we change this larger area. GeoPlanner also allows the ability to split and merge polygons giving you a diversity of tools for designing. Again, we'll use our draw tool and change this one area in an area that's unsuitable for green infrastructure to high density, density residential units. Go ahead to paint that one. All right. So very quickly, we can see that there's a big difference in the number of total dwelling units and the water consumption factors that go along. So we've created a lot more density in housing, but we're at the same water usage. So the moral of the story here is that high density housing consumes less land and less water. GeoPlanner allows us to see this in a side-by-side -side comparison. So we can switch this side of the map to a sing our single family scenario and the second side of the map to our multi-density, high 
multi-use high density scenario and get a nice visual comparison in our map, but also a quantitative comparison by looking at the dashboards. So while our land our densities are very different, we have 6,000 res single family residential units compared to only 245 on this side. Multifamily residential hasn't changed very much. But our mixed use is far, far higher in our multifamily higher density scenario. And total units is about 6,000 higher, yet water usage is the same. All right. You can see these all in one report by using GeoPlanner's KPI report that gives you a quick spreadsheet of all the factors in your project. So on the left, we see all of our different scenarios and a list of every KPI. This list can be downloaded and exported into Excel, taken into other programs to create charts and reports in different applications across the ArcGIS platform. Mm -hmm. 